kung pangunahing layunin no ang ML at 50 ng OICA ito po ay una gunitain at bigyang diin ng kasaysayan ng bayan sa panahon ng batas militar magmulat sa mga suliraning pang-edukasyon hinggil dito gayon din ng bantayan ang paglimot at pagbaluktot sa kasaysayan ng bansa na pabor sa interes ng ilan Kalawa, magsagawa ng mga proyektong talakayan na binibigyang diin ng tugon at tindig ng sining sa ilalim ng diktadurang Marcos, taglay ang malawak at kritikal na perspektibang pangkasaysayan at pangkultura at ikatlo, magbigay parangal sa mga artista at mga kilusang pansining na lumaban sa diktadura at kalabisan ng mga may kapangyarihan. Upang pong simulan ng ating programa, ibig ko pong tawagin ang uh, ating butihing dekano sa College of Mass Communication, si Dean Ernan Paragas, upang magbigay po sa atin ng pambungad na pananalita. Hello LJ, uh, magandang hapon and welcome to the launch of ML at 50, the UPCMC Martial Law Memorial TikTok Challenge. When there are information gaps, we fill in these voids in our minds by choice or by chance. In either instance, there needs to be a source who provides the information that we seek actively or simply come across by chance. Okay naman kung ang informasyong makukuha ay tama o totoo. However, all of us know that there is much disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation happening now. At ito na ang content mula sa kung kanikanino man ang nakararating sa ating mga kababayan na gusto lang naman maintindihan ang mga pangyayari sa nakaraan, sa kasulukuyan, at sa hinaharap. Let us take for example the topic of martial law. TikTok has emerged as a crucial social media platform for information about it. As we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the proclamation of martial law, TikTok will surely be full again of content about it. Pero kailangan nating tanungin kung sino ang gagawa ng mga content na ito at ano nga ba ang kanilang kalidad. Bilang mga scholar ng bayan, gampanin natin na kausapin ang mga kababayan natin kung nasaan man sila. Sa sitwasyong ito, sila ay nasa TikTok. Kaya naman inilulunsad namin ang proyektong ito para tiyakin na may makukuha silang impormasyon sa TikTok tungkol sa martial law na tama at totoo. Bigyang tinig natin ang mga lumaban at tumalaban para sa mga bayan mula sa mga artista na binanggit ni LJ at ang iba pa nating mga bayani. Maraming tumutuligsa at tutuligsa sa ating proyekto at sa inyong mga lilikhain. Pero sabi nga natin, ang mga scholar ng bayan ngayon at magpakailanman ay lumalaban. Before I end my remarks today, let me thank the Office of the Chancellor and the Office of Initiatives for Culture and the Arts of UP Diliman for initiating and supporting our activities campus-wide. Next Tuesday, the UP Film Institute will conduct its own activity and please visit our Facebook page for details. Now, let us all look forward to your entries that will all together comprise a meaningful, substantive, and truthful discourse about martial law. Padayon sa ating lahat ng mga iskwala ng bayan. Back to you, LJ. Maraming salamat po, Dean Ernan. At... Uh... Ito na nga no, ang larangan natin ngayon na inaasahan nating uh, magi mabubuliglig ng ingay no sa, pagda, uh, sa pagdating ng uh, ikalimampung taon ang um, paggunita sa deklarasyon ng martial law ay ang TikTok no. TikTok has emerged as a crucial social media platform in circulation of information in the circulation of information in general no and um there is a need therefore to provide content in TikTok about martial law that is factual totoo no so upang balang kasi no bigyan tayo ng pananaw no hinggil sa ating gawain ito sapagkat hindi lamang naman ito paglikha ng content kung hindi paglikha ng makabuluhang content no ibig ko pong tawagin ang isa po nating kasamahan sa College of Mass Communication no siya po ay isang associate professor sa UP Film Institute uh, ginagalang na documentary filmmaker at historiador pampelikula ang kanya pong mga publikasyon ay uh, kinilala na no at uh, 
mahalagang mga babasahin sa kasaysayan ng pelikula at uh, pag-aaral ng pelikula, no? Tumanggap na po siya ng napakaraming mga pagkilala, mga international fellowships at grants at nagsilbing jury member sa iba't ibang pandaigdigang film festivals. So, para po bigyan tayo ng makabuluhang balangkas sa paglikha natin ng mga TikTok content tinggil sa martial law, naririto po si uh, Associate Professor Nick De Ocampo. Magandang hapon po. Uh, magandang hapon at maraming salamat sa pagbigay sa akin ng pagkakataon na makapagsalita tungkol sa TikTok. No? So uh, alam ko na ang uh, uh, dapat bigyan pansin natin at bigyan diin sa pag-aaral na ito ay uh, tungkol nga no, sa martial law. Uh, ngunit uh, bigyan pansin din natin ang form no ng uh, TikTok mismo so medyo ang aking may ambag dito ay um, isang formalist na pag-approach dito at uh, bilang isang guro ng uh, uh, pag- sa pagtuturo ng pelikula at in fact iniwan ko ang aking world cinema class right now uh, in-invite ko sila mag-attend dito para makinig naman sa ating uh, sasabihin dito uh, dahil uh, Uh, pag-isipan natin kung ang, ang TikTok nga ba ay isang uri ng pelikula Is TikTok cinema? How is TikTok rhizomatic? Dahil yan ang topic na binigay sa akin no? Medyo nagulat din ako no? na, uh, na pag-usapan natin ang rhizomatic Pero napakahalaga ito no? sa ating uh, paglalahad tungkol uh, sa medium mismo na gagamitin ng uh, kung sino mang sasali dito. At ang tanong na mahalaga sa atin, at alam ko na masasagot, mas masasagot ito ni uh, Professor Jose Labiste mamaya, is how can TikTok address the theme of martial law? So as someone who teaches film martial law, I am interested in the way TikTok shows images that, pa- that parallel the first cinematic representations made in the form of motion pictures. The first images produced by the film apparatus have striking resemblances with the images that we now see in TikTok, a hosting platform that shows short-form videos that have become addictive to many of its users for the entertainment it features. TikTok has brought early cinema to the digital age with images like someone dancing, pet animals, funny skits, etc. This galvanizes The idea that motion pictures attract viewer attention as they did before only brought to a new technological medium. Its brevity or its shortness makes it more attractive because it allows anyone to watch as many images, plus there is sound or music to add to the fun. These many images attest to the one trait that moving pictures have in common, that of multiplicity. By its nature, cinema is a multiplicity. To describe this, one recalls the French philosophers Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari's concept of the rhizome. A rhizome is a concept in post-structuralism that describes a non-linear network that, and I quote, connects any point to any other point, end of quote. A rhizome is anti-linearity. It detests singularity and homogeneity. It is a critique of fascism. The theory and research of the rhizome allows for multiple non-hierarchical entry and exit points in data representation and interpretation. The rhizome, like TikTok, offers the promise of egalitarianism. TikTok's diverse images celebrate cinema's multiplicity. With no apparent coherence nor hierarchical pattern of organization, TikTok offers a nomadic visual cartography, which allows a porous spread of images, respecting no boundaries for their expression. It serves whatever need to satisfy, informational, entertaining, persuasive, inspiring, surprising, funny. The more impulsive the image, the more resounding its impact. While TikTok has been studied for its effects on viewers, I want to turn our attention to the makers of TikTok. And that's you, those who will be joining this competition. Why do people post TikTok images and why are people addicted addicted to watching them? Anyone resorting to TikTok does not go to it blindly. 
Perhaps they may be driven less by a highly conscious act, but no one doing TikTok can claim he does not or he does it without the agency needed to encode and send a message. The sender may be overwhelmed by the adrenaline that makes one rush to dance or capture a fleeting moment like a cat pouncing on a dog, but it cannot be denied that there is a hand that presses the start button to capture the moment that we see in TikTok. Before that hand triggers the message to be sent, there has first to be a mind to formulate the data and command it to be disseminated. No matter how trivial, the sender is a conscious, sentient being. It is this act of pushing the button to capture a moment that I want to discuss as a form of agency. Agency is defined as, and I quote, the capacity to act, end of quote. It is characterized by intentional action, which is more fundamental than the notion of action itself. It is agency and the notion of intentionality that I want to problematize. This can be a difficult task to pursue as the entertainment quality of the medium overtakes and overwhelms any serious regard for what is being studied. But by pursuing the rhizomatic logic of the medium, there is always room for a serious regard of TikTok as a messaging format. It is here that I invoke the role of agency and its attached value of intentionality in making TikTok relevant to the TikTok challenge that the OICA and CMC uh, has organized. What does the competition want to achieve? How does one approach its aim? The UPCMC TikTok challenge is better served by turning the medium of TikTok on its head and subvert its nonchalance nature into becoming a more relevant theme and activity. The challenge is how to turn, and rather, may I say it again, the challenge is how to own the narrative and twist it to attend to the project's need, that is, to tell the story of martial law, to forward of its evils, to unmask its machinations. Shortly, Professor Josa Labiste will tell us more about the significance of remembering martial law. One way to achieve this is to intervene in the visual formulation of TikTok. In content, we can think of many ways to address the subject. One can dig at the historical past and bring out facts about the dictatorship. One can be ideological and seek the truth about issues regarding the past military regime. One can be philosophical and see through the clouded past, the shining ideals that made Filipinos survive a difficult period. In doing any of this, one can be playful, factual, comic, sardonic, grave, sarcastic, wise, or whatever mood or thought that serves the need of the rhizomatic TikTok creator. In terms of form, TikTok stands on the shoulders of a rich past whose cinematic legacy offers an assortment of techniques to visually articulate many complex issues. The reductive quality of the medium that squeezes intricate topics into a short format allows a subject as serious as martial law to be understood by a large audience that has grown accustomed to the split-second delivery of news and entertainment. Besides its short length, its capacity to capture topics that may be unappealing can be reappropriated using any of the rhizomatic expression this mission, this medium takes. Contents can be made political, even abstract, and experimental in form, as standard narrative forms can no longer be effective. So lastly, the rhizomatic nature of TikTok can be its own great asset. In its multiplicity, one can assert one more theme, such as that of martial law, and make it once more relevant to the current time. How will martial law be seen and expressed in a form that contains the visual, the visual language of the present generation? It is like taking a serious dissertation and turn it into a graffiti with its immediate need to grab attention and make someone aware of the issues at stake. One is, however, warned of the underside of this instant messaging. One may sacrifice substance for brevity, fact for sensation, truth for lies. In everything, there is a price to pay. One needs to seek the ethical use of TikTok 
or any communication media for that matter, if one were to effectively convey one's message. The medium of TikTok is now in our hands. Millions await your messages to be delivered. What to say and how to say it demands your full agency. May the force be with you. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Nick. Uh, kanina nabanggit na po na ang susunod nating tagapagsalita ay si Dr. Maria Diosa Labiste. Uh, siya po ay guro sa kagawaran ng pamamahayag sa UP College of Mass Communication. Uh, nakamit po niya ang kanyang DPhil PhD mula sa University of Birmingham, UK na may focus sa media, kultura at lipunan. Uh, siya po ay isang o naglingkod siyang community journalist sa Iloilo ng mahigit dalawampung taon at aktibo sa pag-organisa at uh, pagtuturo sa mga community journalists uh, sa pook na iyon. Ang kanya pong tatalakayin sa atin ay pagpapalalim no, noong nilalaman. Kanina ang tinalakay po ni Sir Nick ay yung anyo. Ngayon na po yung nilalaman ng mga TikTok na videos na inyo pong lilikhain. So narito po si Associate Professor Labiste para sa kanyang pagtalakay sa importance of remembering the martial law years. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Uh, Associate Professor Nick Diocampo gave an excellent overview and uh, a discussion of uh, the importance of rhizomatic Uh, theory applied to TikTok. Um, I have little to add, but let me share with you my presentation. It's not specifically about martial law, but it's more on why we should be on TikTok. And I'm uh, addressing this uh, mes- uh, presentation. I'm offering this presentation to young people who might be doing the production I might be joining the TikTok challenge. So let me... Okay, can you see my presentation now? Do we okay ba ako? Yes, great. So uh, this is a question, but it's also a declaration and perhaps a call to arms. Uh, to answer my question, I will highlight four points and they all... Uh, start with letter P. So four P's para madali ma- maalala. So why we sh- why should we, why we should be on TikTok? Bakit kay kailangan nasa TikTok? The first is presence. Rather than shattering our hopes and immobilizing ourselves, we should enlist in the battle against disinformation. Misinformation, fake news, conspiracy theories, historic denialism, and other semiotic evils of the Marcus Martial Law. This past year has proven that the mainstream media are not enough to prevent the spread of lies, especially in the 2019 and the 2022 elections. The presence of media-led fact-checking coalitions, of which I'm a member, have, helped, have been helpful in pointing out forms of disinformation, but they all fell short of reaching the broad masses that were targeted by, by the networks of disinformation. In the 2022 elections, we'll know the Marcos Duterte tandem uh, and how they tried to manipulate information with the goal of which is uh, having themselves elected to power. Presence that I'm going to highlight here refers to us joining the fight for better information ecosystem to TikTok whose phenomenal popularity already discussed with Professor Nick Diocampo as a short video application has political possibilities. The second P that I'm going to uh, offer is protest. Why should we be on TikTok? Because we should stage a protest. We should protest the erosion of freedoms, censorship, the rehabilitation of a discredited dictator, shut down of news organizations, and banning of books. Democracy, the liberal but also the fractured kind, has been undone by Duterte, uh, his punitive populism. Uh, at the same time, that the poor get poorer and his cronies get richer 
even at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. TikTok can be a space where we can transform our individual digital footprints and in, into enabling an empower, empowering collective march to challenge the hegemonic discourses that spread lies and suppress our freedoms so that the evils of the Marcus dictatorship should not be repeated or cannot be repeated. The third piece is politics. TikTok is the playground of Gen Z's. By Gen Z, I mean the generation born between 1997 and 2012, and this generation is a potentially powerful political force. Gen Z attracted the attention of politicians, advertisers, marketers, researchers, and demographers. Gen Z individuals construct their identities online and see social media as a vehicle to share their views and other forms of expression. In the 2022 elections, this generation of young people, united by age, lab stage, technology, and events, actively participated in huge political mobilizations because they want to make a difference. The Gen C's online and offline political participation should be encouraged. Older generations, of which I belong to, could also learn from Gen C's values of flexibility, increased mobility, collaboration, inclusion, dialogue, entrepreneurship, and embrace of fun. This, this generation has a lot to teach us, including how to be on TikTok. The last P is pyrotechnics. Other than things that explode on the air, the other meaning of pyrotechnics is a brilliant performance or display of a particular skills. TikTok is a portal for performance where we and more so young people can show their new ones, culture, cultural and linguistic repertoires. It is also the place where we could construct, narrate and project ourselves in participatory digital space or digital public sphere. TikTok has a lot of problems. We all know this as a digital public sphere. However, it holds immense political possibilities. If we nurture the spirit of activism and creativity as we turn to become spectacular on TikTok. So there we have four P's. I said present, protest, politics, and pyrotechnics. Four points to remember why we should be on TikTok. Maraming salamat. Thank you po, uh, Ma'am Josa. At um, ito na nga, contest ito. No? So to tell us about the mechanics of the TikTok challenge, I would like to call um, uh, Dr. Rachel Kahn of the uh, UP Journalism Department and the project head, yung ating tagapamuno ng uh, gawain ito upang ipaliwanag sa atin, ipakilala sa atin itong contest at kung papaano po kayo makakalahok. Uh, Dr. Kan? Hi, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Um, ito na po yung iniintay yung mga um, mechanics no para tayo ay mag-tiktok lahat. So, um, ngayon nga, ilo-launch natin ito Um, and the um, participants has one about a month to produce their TikToks. Actually, um, kailangan yung submission date ay um, October 1. Um, at ang mga TikTok ay dapat na naka-upload between today. Siyempre, medyo mahirap yan today. Pero hanggang today, hanggang September 30, ang upload. Sino ang pwedeng sumali? So all currently undergraduate students of any University of the Philippines constituent units. Kumbaga, system-wide ito plus yung UPIS grades 11 and 12. Um, so anong kailangan gawin? No? So the TikTok entry can be in the form of song. Yung inexplain po sa atin ni uh, Professor Dio Campo kanina, any form of a creative input. No? With the theme of martial law uh, his, as a historical memory, manindigan sa katotohanan itanghal ang katarungan. Ang mananalo dito ay dahil nga ito yung challenge, ay um, may, may meron tayong mga prizes at medyo generous po yung mga prizes natin. Ang top content creator, ibig sabihin, 
tatlo sa mga na entries ay uh, napili ng mga judges ay makakakuha ng 20,000 pesos. Yung best TikTok, isa lang yung baga, isang TikTok na yung pinakamahusay na na judge ay makakakuha ng 10,000. At meron din mga runner-ups, runner-up sa top content at runner-up sa best TikTok. Plus ang mga finalists uh, ay makakakuha rin ng 2,500. So, worthwhile po na sumali dito. So, ano ba ang dapat gawin? So, ang mga entry, as we said, can be serious or funny, pero dapat historically factual. Ngayon, nabanggit kanina na maraming TikTok na satirical ang dating, medyo di, hindi namin masyadong tinatanggap to kasi as a, nung nagpa-fact-check kami during the elections, Marami pong satire na in, na um, mga TikTok na na twist at it just confused the public. So hindi malinaw na nakitang satire to. So pwede namang satire pero sobra dapat malinaw na satire siya kasi um pag na misconstrue at naisip na na um na totoo, dadagdag lang po ito kasi sa disinformation rather than it um adds adding to the needed uh, truth and uh, truthful information that we have on TikTok. Yung entry po ay pwedeng minimum of 30 seconds to a maximum of 2 minutes and must have a um, high, high definition resolution of 1080 times 920. Ito po yung um, makikita to sa ano sa telepono pa lang to no na na um, HD level. So you don't need fancy equipment your cell phone, your smartphone, can um, actually reach this resolution. Lahat ng TikTok entry ay dapat may hashtag uh, UPCMCML50 para ho ma- madali naming matrace rin yung, yung TikTok at also para magkaroon tayo ng isang body of entries na we can go through and share with everyone. Each challenger may submit a maximum of three entries but uh, they can only win once. Kung baga, kung nanalo na kayo sa top content, hindi, hindi po pwedeng manalo rin sa best TikTok. So, isa lang po dun sa mga kategorya na, um, na binibigay namin. Uh, this TikTok entry should be set to public para madaling makita ng mga judges natin kasi ang kukunin namin mga judges ay hindi taga UP Mascom. Kung baga, yung nasa industriya sila ng, um, ng media. So if using secondary material, challengers are responsible for gaining permission for including any copyrighted material that needs permission. So paano po ito i-judge? Creativity po, um, paggamit ng medium ay 50%. Factuality, yung historical ac- accuracy, 30%. And engagement or potential to contribute to the conversation ay 20%. Ngayon kung magkakaroon ng screening committee mula sa kolehyo na mag-check kung lahat ng entry po ay may factuality. So yung screening committee, ang trabaho nila ay to see if you meet the minimum requirement. Kasi po pag may maling historika, kung hindi siya historically accurate, ay madidisqualify po kayo. And all the um, entries are to be submitted to this link. Ipo-post po namin to. Gagawa po kami ng poster para makita niyo ulit kung saan ililink itong mga entries. But basically, itong form na to, ay dyan niyo po ipo-post yung links ng mga ginawa ng TikTok um, at para makita or ma- maipon po ng screening committee ng kolehyo. Thank you very much. I am open to questions. All right, So sa mga mga ano po no sa sa ating mga bisita sa silid na ito no uh, may mga tanong po ba kayo hinggil sa mechanics at hinggil sa mga tinalakay sa atin ni uh, ni Sir Nick at ni Ma'am Josa no baka may gusto kayong itanong so maaari ninyong uh, buksan ang inyong camera at uh, magpakilala kayo o i-chat ninyo o i-type ninyo sa chat box ang inyong mga tanong at amin itong babasahin. So, meron po bang mga tanong? Ako siguro no lang ma- mauuna ko magtanong. <laughs> meron po tayo mga mga ano to no mga posters ito na maaari nilang mabasa no at mabasa yes. ng gusto. Yung ano saan po natin ito isi-circulate itong ating mga 
uh, formal na, na nakasulat na announcement? Um, unang-una po sa Facebook post ng um, MASCO at uh, i-distribute rin ho ito ng information office ng, ng UP. So nasa UP website rin ang press release natin which will contain the mechanics. At Uh, sa iba, iba pong um, constituent units, yung sa mga website po ng mga UP um, ng iba-ibang um, provinces. No? So, so basically, lahat ng information office ng mga UP system, ng mga constituent units, ipopost din po, to, po ito. At ang mga deans ng mga may communication schools sa iba't ibang mga UP system. Okay no so napaka-exciting nitong ano no gawain at uh, palagi ko yung mga kabataan no na naririto at nakakapakinig nung ating paglulungsad no ay maalam talaga sa sa TikTok no parang kabisadong kabisado nila ito no kaysa sa mga mga ano no mga medyo nakakatanda at mga guro di ba ah uh, meron po ba kayong mga tanong may mga tanong pa po ba So tandaan lang natin ano so ang uh, ang contest na ito ay bukas sa lahat ng mga enrolled undergraduate students from any of uh, the UP uh, constituent units at grades 11 and 12 no tama po no ng UPIS o UP integrated schools no ah uh, Medyo na skip ko to ano no Ma'am Rachel parang nasabi pa natin kung magkano yung mga premyo. Ayo um I I started off with the prizes. So ang first prize sa top content creator, kumbaga tatlo tatlong TikTok niya ang mapipili. Um 20,000. Wow, di ba mm-hmm. napakalaki. Um yung best TikTok, kumbaga isa lang na entry pero nakita siyang napakagaling ay 10,000. Tapos yung first prize ng top content creator, um, uh, parang naalala ko parang 7,500 yung sa, sa first mm. runner-up ng, kung naalala ko, pwede siyang mas mataas. Uh, tapos yung sa best TikTok, 5,000 yung runner-up sa best TikTok. Tapos magkakaroon din ng 10 finalists na makakatanggap ng 2,500 each. Okay, yun. Tandaan natin yung ano no, tandaan natin ito parang mas nakaka nakakaingganyo no. Nakakaingganyo kasi meron kayong ano no, uh, premyo na inaanticipate no at syempre no hindi lamang ito anticipation of the price no. I think mas malaki yung ano no, yung benepisyo ng paglikha ng mga factual ng mga TikTok. Uh, videos no lalo pa at inaasahan nga natin itong barrage of uh, uh, ano no at uh, disinformation no na na hahagupit sa atin no pagdating nitong mga susunod na araw no ng pagdiriwang paggunita hinggil sa uh, deklarasyon ng batas militar noong uh, ng noong 1972 no. Ah uh, may na nagtanong po sa ating ano no sa ating chat box no. Pasensya na po kasi hindi ko po nakikita yung uh, yung panglahatang chat box no. Nakikita ko lang ay yung uh, chat box namin no na uh, nag uh, nag-oorganisa nitong paglulungsad no. Ang tanong ay kung magkakaroon ba ng uh, uploading nitong recording na ito. I-upload po ito no sa ano no i-upload po ito sa 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 CMC uh, UP saka, CMC oh, oh, saka sa YouTube then uh, we will try to upload it into as many venues as possible plus bibigyan ho rin namin ng kopya mga bawat um, each constitute uh, unit yung mga information offices kaya makita niyo rin sa website ito oh, ng UP ayun. mismo Oo, siguro no parang pagkatapos naman ng ilang oras o so kahit bukas no pwede na ninyong i-Google no itong contest na ito para mahanap ninyo ang uh, mga impormasyon na inyong kakailanganin sa inyong paghahanda no sa inyong mga TikTok. So good luck po sa ating lahat, good luck po sa inyo. Ang announcement ng mga mananalo at awarding ay sa October 17. No, yan po ay Lunes at uh, sa ikalawa ng 
hapon no at uh, kung kayo po ay uh, ano no uh, sumali dito sa silid na ito no kung kayo po ay sumali lalo doon sa contest no uh, inaanyayahan din po namin kayo no sa mga activity ng ML at 50 no at uh, uh, merong uh, martial of film series ang um, UP Film Institute so hanapin po ninyo na lamang ang inyong ang mga anunsyo in detail sa sa uh, mga gawain ito. May mga tanong pa po ba? Okay, palagi ko ano no, palagi ko nakuha na nila, nadampot na nila yung kanilang mga mga importanteng uh, kailangang malaman ng sa contest nito. So maraming salamat po Ma'am Rachel. Isang Mar- tip lang, may oh, ayun, isang tip ako niya habol. Kasi ang OICA, ang Office of Initiative of Culture Arts, marami pong activities. Sa diliman lang, um, siguro higit sa sampu yung activities for martial law. At sa bawat-bawat unit, may sarisariling mga um, mga aktividades yan, mga webinar, mga lectures, whatever. Pwede itong gawing, ito yung um, pwedeng basihan or pwedeng makakuha ng idea para sa content ng TikTok. Diba? So to take advantage next week by by actually by tomorrow mag-uumpisa na yung mga activities ng Koika na magkakaroon ng ay, makakakuha ng maraming ideya para sa paggawa ng TikTok. So pwede rin lang abangan 'yon. Oh, ayun. LJ, may mga tanong ako na tatanggap dito. Okay, uh, na po so, Sir Ernan, hindi ko po kasi talaga sila oh, natin. Uh, I activated the, everyone, the chat for everyone, but I'm getting the messages. Uh, so there's a question, can minors join the challenge like grades 11 and 12? Um, pwede po, pero kailangan po may consent ng parents at saka ng di, nung principal po sa UPIS. Ayan, may isa pag tanong dito. Pwede po ba magsama ng tao na di estudyate ng UP doon sa mismong content? UP student pa rin naman yung gagawa ng video. Pwede naman po, yes. Pero ang UP student lang yung makakatanggap din ng premyo. Ay, share na lang niya, di ba? Ano na siya mag-share? Alatuhan ko na lang. So, yan. Yeah, yun yung mga tanong na tangkap natin. Oo. Ayun. Pasensya na po. Hindi ko po kaagad na iba- nabasa kasi... <laughs> Oo. Oh, <laughs> naka... Security settings tayo. <laughs> Oo. Oh, hindi lumalo. Hindi lumabas sa akin. So, hindi ko kaagad nabasa yung, yung mga tanong. May mga tanong pa po ba? May, may, may tanong ako. Di ba? Parang siyempre, no? Parang... Doon sa rubric, no ba, parang may factuality, no? Parang ano po yung mga maimumukahi ninyo mga sets of materials at sources na pwede nilang tunghan, no, sa paglikha ng kanilang mga content. Um, unang-una yung mga um, nagawa na ng mga past activities on martial law. So actually, isang source na pwede nilang tignan ang TVUP may isang section doon na mga past years of a set of commemorating or remembering martial law. Um, meron din po yung mga activities na katulad ng ginawa ng um, College of uh, Tourism, yung um, mismong UP, how UP was uh, involved or affected by martial law. Meron din mga webinar ng mga witnesses uh, ng martial law. So, Uh, marami pong sources na pwedeng kuhanin sa history department na lang magkakaroon ng series of activities starting Monday na pwedeng pagkuhanan ng content uh, sa mga TikTok. So, syempre, sa sarili nating kolehiyo, may, meron tayong dalawang courses, I think, na martial law related. Pwede rin po ito. Oo, oh, oh, yun. No? So, siguro no, maidaragdag pa no, yung mga lumalaking mga archives no, na naka-PDF, na kumakalat sa social media na ginagawa ng no, mga, mga nagbubuluntaryo no, para uh, tiyakin no, na itong mga material na ito ay patuloy nating mababasa at uh, nasa pangangalaga no, ng mga nagmamalasakit. May tanong po dito, um, Paki-clarify daw po, Ma'am Rachel, yung pong kaibahan ng top content creator at best TikTok video. Um, yung top uh, top content creator, yun yung tatlo yung kumbaga dun sa tatlong entries niya, lahat magaganda at lahat nasa nasa finalist. Kumbaga umabot siya ng um, qualification ng finalist mm-hmm. at all three. So so yun yung top 
yun yung top content creator. Yung best TikTok, yung nag-iisang TikTok na um, napili ng judges na yung pinaka-muhusay, pinaka-original na TikTok. Okay, ito pangalawang tanong. Kailangan din daw ba ng references sa dulo ng video? Um, hindi na po. Uh, kasi malalaman po ng judges natin, kukuha tayo, meron tayong judge na mula sa history department ng uh, Departamento ng Kasaysayan dito sa UP Diliman na isa sa mga judges na mag-verify po kung totoo yung laman ng TikTok. Okay, so, ayun. Ang, oh. ang caution ko lang kung may copyrighted material po, dapat kasama dun sa end yung pagpasok nila dun sa pag-submission nila dun sa ating form, submission form, um, dapat yun, may yung permiso ng paggamit ng copyright na kasama rin yun. Ayun, so, tiyakin na lamang po siguro no, na uh, inyo mapipil out ang form no meron itong form na kasama nakalakip no so hindi na kayo mag-upload ng mga TikTok videos na meron kayong isasubmit na form no at syempre uh-huh. yung, yung, po, yung, yung yung form um yung link kumbaga i-upload nila sa kanilang account uh-huh. yung TikTok tapos uh-huh. yung link doon sa TikTok nila yung dapat nilang ipasok doon sa form uh-huh. at saka yung requirement na proof of um yung kanilang verification as UP students Yes. So, kailangan po nilang i-proweba na UP student sila, uh, kumuha lang ng permiso either sa principal, sa UPIS, or dun sa kanilang dean or department head. Okay. So, abangan po ninyo no, inyong, uh, ang, ang mga anunsyo, official na anunsyo sa contest na ito. No? Uh, ito naman po ay isi-circulate natin. So, pukang wala ng tanong. So, maraming salamat po, uh, Ma'am Rachel. No? Maraming salamat po sa ating mga naging uh, tagapagsalita, tagapanayam ngayong, uh, tang, uh, ngayong hapon. No? Si uh, Sir Nick, saka si Ma'am Diosa. At syempre, maraming salamat po kay Dean Ernan no? na kasama po nating uh, nag-organisa ng paglulungsad na ito. Uh, nagpapasalamat po ang uh, UPCMC sa OICA, no? sa, <clears throat> sa Office for Initiative in Arts and Culture ng University of the Philippines, Diliman, para sa pag-organisa ng ML at 50 at uh, pagsuporta sa gawain ito. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at kung wala na pong tanong, maraming salamat po. Magkita-kita po tayo sa uh, pag-aanunsyo no, ng mga nanalo at pag-award ng mga nanalo sa isang buwan, no, sa susunod na buwan sa October 17 ng 2 p.m. So, muli magandang hapon po at uh, mabuhay tayong lahat.